I really don't know how he did it. How did Abraham trust God enough to take his only son Isaac to Mount Moriah, intending to sacrifice him to God? It astounds me as sort of the pivotal moment in Old Testament history. Abraham and Sarah, who have waited for years to have a child, are asked to surrender him to God. Now, I don't know about you, but when God asked me to surrender the stuff I don't like about myself, my sin, my sickness, I'm happy to surrender that to him. But when it comes to the most precious things, I struggle. Abraham and Sarah longed for this boy. They waited for him probably for 17 years after they were promised him. And here he is beginning to move toward adulthood and they were probably terrified that something would happen to them. There's a lot we can take from the story of Abraham and Isaac going up Mount Moriah. But for me, one of the things that is most important is the fact that God wants us to face our fears. You know, Job says in, in, in the book of Job, after losing his children, what I feared has come upon me. And it's true that some of the things that we fear the most could happen. The terrifying thought of losing a child is something that probably every parent struggles with. But here, God asks Abraham to walk straight toward his fear. Not only to worry that someone else would wield a knife against his boy, but that he himself was asked to take up the weapon to end his own son's life. It's unbelievable. But I believe that God will not have us victim to our fears. He will not have us live in uncertainty about the future. He wants us to know that whatever happens, we can trust Him. I work with lots of people who, who fear things like flying on a plane or public speaking or getting on an elevator. But what I've learned is that the reason for your fear doesn't matter as much as facing your fear. If you're going to learn to public speak, you just got to get up in front of the crowd and do it. If you want to get over your fear of elevators or flying, you got to walk on the elevator and get on the plane. It's the only way to move beyond fear to freedom. It's the only way to really take hold of your ability to live life to the full. We have to face our fears. So if there's something that troubles you, some possibility, some eventuality, some circumstance or loss that could come about that terrifies you, please don't back away from it. Please don't try to avoid it or banish the thought. Instead, I wanna encourage you to play the movie. Actually take yourself through that circumstance or loss or difficulty in your imagination. And as you do it, Imagine getting through it and asking yourself two questions. Is God still God? And is God still good? The first question, is God still God? Ask us to consider the fact that if that worst case scenario comes to be, can we still affirm God's sovereignty and our trust in His ability to control what comes into our experience? The second question, is God still good? hinges on the fact that we need to believe that God can turn even the most evil thing into good if we allow Him. He's still good in the face of the most painful possibility. He's still good even when He allows us to suffer unimaginable loss. Whether we're Job or Abraham or just an ordinary person, God asks us, to live in freedom, to live in trust and faith and not fear. Whatever it is you're facing, do what God asked Abraham to do. Take that walk up Mount Moriah to the altar. Be willing to take not just the terrible things in your life, but the most precious things and put them on the altar. Be willing to trust God and surrender all.